Um, okay, good. Yeah. So um, I I was actually asked by uh, by Adam to uh, talk about my recent papers with John Paul and Zanai. Uh, um, so I thought about it, uh, and uh, then I tried to uh, summarize in this uh, simple, uh, simple title of this talk, dynam Fluid Dynamics Among Fluids. You can see uh, what, I mean, what I mean by this uh, title. So, um, so the, 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 the physics I'm going to talk about is actually about the head projector, and the motivation of the attractor itself is actually from the experiments you have included. I think most people here understand what the picture means, that uh, that is to say the system of the high, in the high clearance was created by the hiding nucleus. And you have the QGP and the QGP will expand and cooling and at some point, the system will uh, expand and, and expand to the freeze out uh, temperature or freeze out condition. After which you have the particles which uh, are, uh, are measured in the, uh, in the experiment apparatus. And we know that hydromodeling uh, works very well for the system evolution. Hydromodeling itself contains the initial condition part, and you have to solve the hydro equation motion, which is coupled to the equation of state. And uh, after the evolution was captured by hydro equation motion itself, you need the freeze out condition to convert the hydro variables to particles. And um, so I, I think I need to remind you that the hydro modeling works well, but the hydro equation motion itself actually uh, comes from the inferior theory of hydrodynamics. And uh, that means you have to consider the system is close to enough to the local equilibrium. And I'll say how to say the system is close to the thermalization condition. And, and with that condition that you can expand the expansion, expand your hydrodynamics uh, order by order, depending on some expansion parameter, this is Kn, I'm going to note it as the Newton number, and I'm going, I'm going to tell you what the Kn means. And in principle, all this hydro modeling high uh, was truncated to second order. So we have the first order hydro, which depends on the shear viscosity, the bond viscosity, et cetera, and second order viscous hydro, but you don't have third order ones. Um, so that's the picture of hydrodynamics. And the standard picture of hydrodynamics actually works, I think, from early uh, 2000 to uh, some, some several years ago. And the condition of hydrodynamics to be applied uh, requires some initial con the initialization of some tau zero. And means you have to consider the system to be close to, any, to local equilibrium, local equilibrium. So this is the picture uh, that interprets uh, the close to equilibrium is how this is captured. So we, you always use this ratio among longitudinal pressure and the transfer of pressure. And we know that the difference between this pressure to one, it's uh, captured by viscous corrections. So when this, when this ratio is close to one, you can imply your viscous hydrodynamics. And uh, this is a standard picture of, of hydrodynamics uh, and the onset of hydrodynamics. And the tau zero uh, itself is a long-standing question. We need to understand why tau zero is so small in high clearance. And that's why our hydrodynamic applies to this high clearance, uh, especially when the system is small, the tau zero is even smaller. So if you consider it, the, uh, the QGP itself is strong coupling based on this uh, duality calculation, uh, some results imply that tau zero can be small. But we know in fact that the QGB itself has high temperatures weak coupled, so the alpha is very small. And in that uh, extreme, the estimate of tau zero is not so small. For example, if you use the very famous uh, bottom up scenario, the tau zero can be estimated as some uh, power of the alpha S. And of, of course, it's also related to saturation scale. Uh, if you start use the alpha S to be some small number and saturation scale, uh, around 1 GV, for example, and we will say that this number of tau zero is order of 10 or even 20 from your C. So that's that's quite large. So it's not applicable for the reality of the realistic QGB evolution. Of course, this is a uh, bottom scenario assumed alpha to be extremely small at where this uh, this parameterization was. But you can also solve, for example, consider the alpha to be some uh, small but not so small number, like one third. And what do they find that even in this case, the tau zero is not that small. So this is uh, actually some theory puzzle why the system uh, evolves with a small tau zero. But on the other hand, we know from the experiment that uh, the system itself is indeed uh, evolved collectively. Uh, so shows, shows some fluid dynamic picture. Um, so this is the, for them, one of these uh, simple example is the two point correlations. 
And you can see that the long range two point correlation in the larger system, compared to that, there's no long range correlation in the small system, especially in the PP system. And this long range correlation is a, a very clear signature of, long, of the connectivity. And we know that it's not a qualitative, uh, uh, it's a, not a qualitative uh, signature of the connectivity, but also uh, quantitatively gives you the, how the connectivity uh, is in, can be measured. That is the, a well-known uh, well harmonic flow or any sort of flow Vn. So that is, you have to uh, do a Fourier transform of the two-point correlation and each other in the Fourier transform of the each other, uh, each other, if the coefficient of the Fourier transform at different order gives you the corresponding uh, harmonic flow, uh, V1, V2, V3, et cetera. And this measured flow signature can be, uh, can be have, has been experimentally measured in very different aspects. You can measure it as a function of PT, you can measure it as a function of uh, centrality. And especially for them here, this measurements of this flow as a central function of centrality from not only two party correlation, but the multi particle like four and six and eight, et cetera. And then also for V2, V3, V4, et cetera, all can be well captured by hydrodynamics. So this is what we know. And uh, I'd also, I, I'd like to emphasize that it's not only the magnitude of Vn here, it is just the magnitude of Vn. And this is quite simple. You can say that for hydro to work so well, naturally you can marry even to some more differential uh, observable like the correlation between different flow and the fluctuation of flow. And in either cases, uh, these curves are just from hydro evolution, uh, from hydro simulation. And you do see the hydro also works. So in principle, all this solution uh, using hydro modeling and the measurements from experiment tells her that uh, the system evolution of the QGP gives a high amplitudes. Uh, it's indeed reflecting the nature of fluid dynamics. So that means you have some small perturbation in the initial state, and that perturbation will give you Vn in the final state. Um, so far, so good. But uh, this is for large system. We know recently, actually not quite recently, there are some measurements already from the LHC showing that the multi-particle correlation not only observed in larger system, but also in small system. This is for TLAB. You can see that note, this is for two-particle correlation, uh, two, two party correlation and four and six, eight party correlation. And it's for V2 and also for V3. So this two multi party correlation is very uh, strong significance. Uh, it's a very strong evidence to show that even in small systems, there is uh, collective behavior of the medium evolution. And uh, most strikingly, this collective evolution in the small system also is compatible with hydrodynamic model. So, so far we know that, uh, uh, what we know that the from the phenomenology side, the hydro works very well. But from the theory side, we still have the question that the tau zero can be very, cannot be very small. And especially when we consider the small system, all the scale of the you know, small system because the system size becomes much smaller. Even the time scale of, of the small system in the small system also gets very smaller. So it makes the system even more unlikely to be simulated. So that uh, gives us a very strong, um, uh, gives some inconsistency between the theory uh, between the theory and also some of the modeling from between the theory and uh, from the, between the theory and the phenomenology that is the, you have to consider why the hydro itself works at some initial time which is small and some people also ask, ask this in a different way that's why hydro was so unreasonably well uh, lee can i have a question <clears throat> yeah so you mentioned that uh, the hydro has this initial time for which you turn on. And yeah. I'm just curious that the end result, how sensitive to that if you if you change. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, as a hydro practitioner, we normally know that if you want to uh, well reproduce the marable, normally the tau zero should be smaller than one from your C. And in small system, it should be even smaller. Um, okay. To reproduce yeah. less ordering or what? So it reproduce. Yeah, to reproduce the uh, the all the flow uh, flow variables, you need tau zero to be smaller than one one, one from your Okay. 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 So uh, that's the uh, status of the uh, hydro itself. So if we want to understand the question, uh, solve the question, uh, the problem. Let's go back to look at back, look at the hydrodynamic self. Uh, as I said, hydro itself is uh, it's an effective theory, right? 
And it's in, in principle, it can be written as some conservation law. It's a, it's a, there is a conservation of the energy and the momentum. And here, the TMU mu is the energy momentum, momentum tensor. And it has this uh, constitutive relation, which uh, in principle can be written in terms of this gradient expansion form. So here, the Kn uh, I identify as the dimension is Newton number. So Kn itself, uh, it's a ratio between the microscopic length scale, for example, the infrared path, and the macroscopic length scale, like the system size. So Kn is a is one of is one of the good uh, parameters that characterize how the system how far the system is from local equilibrium. And because you see there is a theory expansion, and the Kn here is the expansion parameter. If you want to the series itself to be valid, you would expect the Kn to be small. And indeed, for most of the hydro system, indeed the Kn is small. Here's the one of the example I looked up online. If actually, uh, people who started the space shuttle once entering the uh, atmosphere at the height of 20 kilometers, in such circumstances, the Kn is 10 to the minus eight, so it's extremely small. So when Kn is small, and you can of course consider in really calculations to truncate this series to some finite orders. That means, for example, we had in the second order hydrodynamics that's in the uh, for the uh, for the high value applications. And uh, these are the fundamental ingredients of hydrodynamics itself, uh, hydrodynamics. But uh, but there's one problem, right? The problem is that even you see the Kn it's 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 easily defined. Actually, it's not convergent. It's on the other hand a symptotic series. So I'll come back to this uh, point later. Um, so although we know all these ingredients of hydrodynamics, if we want to apply it high value equations, that is to say, uh, let's just stick to the real re re application of hydrodynamics at the second order of hydro. So all we always have this T mu mu, uh, the shear tensor, the uh, the bulk pressure, et cetera, which truncated at second order. That means we don't consider all these K into cubic orders and higher orders. And we want to uh, initialize this, uh, this equation of motion for all these variables. We need this, all these variables to be well defined at some time. As I said, the time should be smaller than one from your C. And if you count all these variables here, they are independent at this uh, energy density, at this pressure, and flow velocity and the shear stress tensor and the power pressure. And this actually, this is the, all this theory behind the, what you probably under, heard this uh, IP plasma and the mass, uh, this global model and such are this, all these effect initial models. And this is uh, uh, all, these, all, the, all these initial models actually uh, imply this condition. That is at some time, we already have the, all these quantities well defined. But the, as I said, this is not uh, uh, guaranteed to be true. So to say so, uh, let's start from the conformal case. That's kind of simpler. In the conformal case, of course, this uh, second order risk of hydro doesn't have the uh, non-conformal contribution. So the equation of motion reduced to this two. So I'm solving here is one of these version of second order risk of hydro in a conformal version that is BRSS hydro. So you, in, in addition to this shear viscosity, you see that there's a second order transport coefficient is the tau pi, and also it's lambda one. And this transport coefficient that just, uh, you can find, evaluate them from, from, in, from as the input parameters from underlying dynamics. So uh, you can try different inputs from different dynamics, uh, but I'm not, not going to details, I will not go too into details about these numbers. I would want to say that these numbers won't affect qualitatively I'm going to talk about. Sorry, Lee. So yeah. Do I understand that correctly that the ideal hydro is conformal itself, right? Ideal hydro, not exactly. That depends on the, uh, also the, uh, that is the equation of state. Okay. Yeah, so here the equation of state, I, I, I'm not going, I, I didn't show very clear, clearly, but then you can assume that the energy density uh, it's three times the pressure. So that's a conformal equation of state implied here. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, this is the second order conformal viscous hydro. Let's see uh, how it can be initialized. Uh, to check this problem, to study this problem, uh, we can consider the Bill King extension. Uh, uh, this is not 
the difficult to understand because in the initial stage of having clearance, the system only expands in the longitude direction or dominated by the longitude, longitudinal direction. So a built-in expansion is very good approximation at that point. So because of built-in asymmetry, uh, we can use uh, different set of coordinates like the proper time as based on rapidity instead of tau t and z. And also because of this symmetry, uh, the flow velocity is well uh, determined. So we don't need to worry about flow velocity. We, we are going to worry about it's just the energy density and the, and the shear press tensor. And here also, uh, because of the symmetry of Bilkin expansion, the only non-zero component of the shear tensor is the side side component. And all these uh, tensor structures are uh, on one way or the other related to one over tau. And also in this case, the Newton number is well defined as the ratio, or uh, inverse Newton number is defined as the ratio between the proper time and the uh, shear realization time. I'm going to use the W as the inverse of the Newton number. So now we have to, we can see that the hydro equation of motion, uh, this, this complicated, complicated structures now reduced to this uh, coupled first order differential equations for energy density and small time. So we can solve this. But before we doing that, uh, we still can go in one step further. Okay, we introduce this relative decay rate for the energy density, that is G. You can see this definition here. So G appears in this, uh, in this position of the power. You can see either as, a, as it's here, you can understand that when the system evolves uh, in, the, uh, in the ideal hydrodynamics, this G will be minus for serve. Okay, that means the system is locally thermalized. But on the other hand, if the system is uh, far from equilibrium, naturally it's in the very non-equilibrium stream, that's a free streaming stream, this G, you can prove that it's minus one. So the system evolution will tell you the G will be between the minus one and the minus of third. So and G is not a single function or okay. independent uh, function, it also depends okay. on the ratio between pressure and energy density, and Still also be dependent on the pressure between the, uh, the pi, the shear stress tensor and energy density. So for G, the equation of motion reduced to this one. This is a nonlinear first order uh, differential equation. I can solve that. I can solve that, of course, numerically. And also we can imply this uh, uh, hydro gradient expansion form and to solve this equation. This is the major equation I'm going to study. Um, okay, so uh, this is the result. Okay, let's first uh, see this curves. So this blue line is, uh, we just substitute the first order gradient expansion into the equation which we find here. And here, this is the second order one. And this, because we have, we can do that numerically, you can introduce, we can include as many others as we want. Here we input to 50 other in the gradient expansion on this curves. All these lines here are exact solution from the numerical solutions. You can see that all the gradient expansion doesn't work and doesn't capture the evolution when W is small or the Newton number is, is large. And also you can see that here, all this numerical solution you find independent of initial condition, all these curves tend to merge to one single evolution pattern around W equal to one. And this is one standard of typical uh, picture of the attractor. You probably heard a lot in the community now we call it hydrodynamic attractor. So attractor itself is essentially some uh, some 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 name some some term we borrowed from the dynamic system right and uh, at least you can see that indeed from the definition of tractor indeed the uh, key issue is that it doesn't depend on initial condition and also we can see that if you uh, perturb your solution around the tractor very small and the the perturbation will decay to the tractor very quickly. Um, okay, this is a solution for BRX hydro. But uh, you can, of course, consider all these solutions in different uh, uh, contexts. This is the one of this big figure I find from the Romanski in his paper in 2018. And you see that he saw that for the hydrodynamics, fluid dynamics, and also for the kinetic theory, and also for the ADSFT, so strong coupling system. In all these systems, you see that there exists the, the attractor behavior that is the solution becomes independent of the initial condition at some point. So actually, uh, took a lot, took, took a lot, took us a lot of time to understand uh, why this attractor exists in some physical manner. So we find there are three actually different uh, aspects you can understand the attractor. One is uh, the attractor can be understood between two fixed points. So the here, 
uh, at this uh, side is where the nuisance number is very large. So this is far from equilibrium. Here you have a fixed point. And this, uh, in this extreme, the nuisance number is very small. So you have another fixed point, it's hyper fixed point. So a transfer itself is just some small connection between the two fixed, two fixed points. And also you can understand the, uh, the transfer as some evolution, which is a slow mode evolution and evolve adiabatically. Um, both of these interpretation give you some physical uh, physical meaning, but it have it doesn't have very clear um, uh, mathematical structures. So I'm, I'm going to tell you uh, in some more details about this uh, transfer in, in terms of third three D and in some of in terms of third points. That's the the transfer itself uh, can emerge from the Borel sum of the hydro gradients. So let's go back to the hydro gradient again. So this is a solution in terms of gradient expansion for G, right? And we know that when we substitute all this, this form in our equation star, right? We can solve this uh, expansion coefficient order by order. And here is the result, right? We plot it as a ratio between two consecutive orders of the coefficient fn plus one over fn. And you do see that the ratio itself is linearly dependent on n. And here the slope and the intercept both depends on the uh, transport coefficients. Because of the ratio is linear depends on n, it tells you that it, uh, the uh, the fn itself will grow will grow in the uh, in the factorial fashion, and also that uh, factorial factorial growth tells you that the hydrogen expansion is asymptotic. You can prove that actually, given this condition, that the radius convergence of the series uh, vanishes. So now we know we do know that the solution in the gradient form is asymptotic. But that doesn't that 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 doesn't mean that the uh, the this asymptotic solution is meaning this. Actually, we can imply some. We can consider the so-called Boris sum techniques when we encounter any gradient expansion with any theory expansion which is asymptotic. Um, here are some steps. Uh, very uh, some fundamental aspects of the Boris sum. You can follow all these steps. You will arrive at the real solution. Okay, the first step is you have this gradient expansion, which is an asymptotic, but you can do a ball transform. That is for each order of this uh, uh, transport coefficient, uh, no, each order of the expansion coefficient, you introduce one over n factorial. So this new series itself is a convergent. So this is ball transform. And this convergent series uh, is related to the original series by inverse of a Laplace transform. Okay. So the Laplace transform of the transform gives you the so-called Borel sum of the gradient expansion. And you can see that this, this uh, Laplace transform is actually uh, depends on integral between the zero and infinity. Of course, when you have some singularity of this uh, Borel transform on the real axis, uh, this integral is 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 ill defined. You have to consider uh, uh, an identical. Uh, into, uh, uh, you have to in, you have to uh, you have to consider the integral path to some complex listing instead of the real axis. But anyway, the Borel sum in, from this step to this step implies that the real solution of the hydro uh, equation motion itself not only a gradient expansion form but a transverse form. So this is uh, the real solution form. Right? Each at each other uh, you have a uh, you have actually. A real and imaginary part, each part itself is a, a symptotic theory, but the ball is summable. So the leading order, the next leading order, and the next and leading order, etc. So the expansion uh, parameter here for the trans series is this function, right? This factor is, is the exponential suppression factor and the power factor. So let me emphasize that this factor emerges very naturally when you imply the ball transform regarding this uh, gradient expansion structure. Um, I think this is quite abstract in, in introduction of the Borel transform or Borel sum. So I guess it's better to give you some concrete example. So we, we can do that by showing one of the solution, which is anatomically obtained uh, and is solving the, that is solving the hydro equation motion. So the trick is actually very simple. You just uh, re-parameterize this uh, transform coefficient, this tau pi, uh, as some time-dependent form as tau to the power of one minus delta. Delta is a constant. So if you have tau pi in this form, uh, the inverse function number, this w, is tau over tau pi, uh, becomes tau to the power of delta, right? So 
you can very easily see that when delta goes greater than zero, right, when tau goes to infinite, so this quantity itself goes to zero, or goes to infinite, right? So that means Newton number goes to zero. So the system close to, uh, goes to equilibrium. So delta greater than zero, you have the system go, go into local equilibrium. Uh, in other cases, the delta smaller than zero, the system will go to the opposite limit. So the system will decouple. When delta equals zero, it's never uh, going to equilibrium or never decouple. So uh, for our interest in this talk, I'm going to focus on this one. Although actually the analytic solution uh, exists for all these cases. Okay, right. So as I promised, we know the, uh, given this uh, parameterization of the uh, shared relaxation time, we know the analytic solution. Uh, here the result. So again, this is the uh, uh, relative decay rate of the energy density it can be written in this form. Here, this m and u are just the confluent hypergeometric functions of first and second time. And here, you also have these constant uh, parameters, the g plus and a and b. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what they are, but I just let you know that they are given by the transport coefficient of the theory. And here, the capital A is just a constant of integration. It depends on initial condition. And we know that the tractor the tra solution itself is one particular solution uh, depends on one particular initial condition. And we can prove that that's initial condition quite simple, it's just A equals zero. So we also have the inactive solution for the tractor in this way. Okay, as I said before, uh, we can solve also for delta equals smaller than zero or larger than zero, uh, but that, that doesn't uh, makes our analysis more uh, interesting in, in, in the current con context. So I'm going, not going to talk, talk about that. Um, okay, so we have this uh, solution form, right? We all want to go uh, through this uh, Boris sum techniques. So we need to uh, first find the gradient expansion structure on this solution. And that can be uh, easily achieved because we know the asymptote expansion for this uh, uh, confluent hypergeometric function exists in this structure. And there I, here, this uh, script app is just some asymptotic series. So we substitute this back, we'll get some uh, gradient expansion, uh, which is also asymptotic. And the Boris transform or Boris sum of this script app is very simple because we have a analytic solution. And we can show that the Bohr transform first, it just give you of this script, script, script app, just give you back this uh, Gaussian hypergeometric function. And then this is a natural solution. We can further do the uh, resum or for resum. And that's what we find. Okay. We just uh, find this structure during our for resum. You see, this is a familiar uh, expense, ex exponential factor and a power factor. And we can identify this uh, numbers, this constant numbers S and the beta here. And with all this transfer coefficients on the conformal fluid, we can show that this S is greater than one uh, than zero because we, we show that the delta we can consider itself is greater than zero. But the beta itself depends on uh, is equal to P minus two A plus one, the small, it's a negative number. Okay, so this is quite important because now you see we have this factor W to the beta is exponential uh, minus SW, this factor. And because we have this factor and uh, all this solution, which is uh, which uh, which is have some perturbation around the tractors, will depend on this factor. So this gives you some transient structures. And here the figure I took from Kirkland, and Wu and Whitman, and it's very clear that you can actually uh, see that here is the uh, tractor behavior, right? Uh, for different initial conditions, always uh, merge to the single curve. And you can separate this uh, trend between uh, w, and this w is tau over tau r in this case, smaller than one and greater than one. When w is very small, smaller than one, uh, this factor reduced to this power law. When w is greater than one, this factor is dominated by the exponential factor. And that, as I said, in the conformal fluid, we always find the beta to be uh, smaller than zero, but this uh, s is a positive number. So that tells you when w is smaller than one, right? All this uh, perturbation itself will decay in a power factor, you know, power factor toward the tractor. But when w is larger than one, such as at late time or system close to equilibrium, all this perturbation around the tractor will behave, uh, will decay exponentially. So we can tell the, call this as the early time attractor behavior, and this is the late time attractor behavior. 
Okay. So with all this in hand, let's go back to see uh, how we now we can understand the picture of uh, on-site hydro or early time initial, initialization of hydro modeling and high activities. So this is the standard picture. I understand we need some tau zero, but the, uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the conventional case, we need that consider the tau zero, the system is close to equivalent. So this uh, ratio is very close to one. Uh, however, we have solved that if you look at the ratio between the longitudinal pressure and, and, and the pre uh, transfer pressure, which is also uh, related to this ratio here, it's also related to the uh, relative decay rate of energy, energy density and also related to the ratio between the charge sensor pi and energy density. And we saw that we see there, uh, uh, there exists a transfer structure in all this. So it, it, there exists as well a transfer structure in the, in the pressure ratio. So that's what you really expect, right? For different initial condition, you always see that uh, independent of initial condition, there's some single curve that is a transfer curve that evolved towards one. So given this uh, single curve, which depend independent on initial condition, you can of course initialize your hydrodynamics not only at tau zero, but at any point which on the which is on the uh, attractor curve. Right? You can think in this way. At some point tau zero, which is not here, but some point here, you know the the energy density. You do given that you will be able to check. You'll be able to know that all this time at different tau, what E tau is, because this energy decay rate is a single universe, it's a universal and a single uh, determined curve. And uh, in the similar way, at the initial time, you know this E zero energy density at tau zero and the pi mu mu, the shear shear tensor at the initial time. You can deal in, you can guess what the pi mu mu tau like, because you know this ratio of pi over E and also follows this attractor solution. So that tells us, indeed, if we have a transfer solution, and the transfer solution, especially because we have the early time transfer, that means all this curve, all these uh, perturbations around the um, around the attractor will decay to decay around decay towards the attractor, even at the w over smaller than one. So that gives you the tau zero is very smaller than one Fermi over C. The system can be similarized, uh, not can be similarized, but can be characterized by hydro equation motion. Uh, all this curve is just the solution of hydroelectric motion. And this indeed helps us to understand why we can apply hydrodynamics to small systems. Right. So, so far, so good. This is for the conformal uh, uh, system, however. But uh, let's look like next to see what happens to non conformal system. So, uh, non conformal system, of course, it's more realistic for us to consider because. We know that the QGP itself is, uh, is not conformal, right? You have, I have to consider that uh, there are non-zero or finite quark mass in this quark long plasma. For example, the, at least the, if you consider even two flavor QGP, the mass of up and the down quark is not zero. And of course, uh, as also we know that there's a non there, there's very likely to be non-zero uh, bion density. So mu B could be zero, non-zero. So both of these two, uh, ingredient give you some extra uh, energy scale so that will break the conformal symmetry. And in addition to that, we know also that the equation of state itself is not conformal because we know that in the conformal case, for example, the, uh, the speed of sound square is, uh, is one third, but so this is the lattice result tells you that no matter how energy density, how large energy density is, you can consider this part as the, what may, might be thinking of at the initial time where the QGP uh, starts, Still, the energy, uh, the speed of sound is, is still smaller than one third that conformal limit. So, in all this respect, we know that in realist case, we need to consider the system to be non conformal. So, to solve non conformal and to consider the initialization of non conformal hydro, we, took, we need to go back to see to this uh, non conformal hydro equation motion. So, uh, this is some equation you already see before. So, we have, uh, uh, sorry, uh, this is uh, superscript mu. So you have the T mu mu, you have the, uh, in, in addition to T mu mu, you have the equation of motion for pi uh, stress tensor, a shear stress tensor, and also the equation of motion for the uh, uh, bulk stress, uh, bulk stress, bulk pressure. So we have three couple of equation motions, at least three here. Um, and here, this not only, you can see the non-conformal contribution from pi, but also, as I said, you have to consider the non-conformal uh, a contribution from the equation of state, that is the, uh, if you introduce some uh, 
small number, which is epsilon, because uh, the difference between the uh, uh, three times sum square to one third, and this number should be smaller than, uh, the number should be finite. And also you see that because the mass could be non-zero, so if you introduce this list star, as some uh, uh, dimension, dimensions parameter this time as a mass de determined, de divided by the energy scale that's always uh, normally taken as the temperature. So the net, this number can be non small, non, non zero, but can be small. Anyway, in all these cases, uh, we know because it's non conforming contribution, we have some extra uh, uh, transport, second order transport coefficient like this delta pi pi, small pi, delta pi by larger, uh, great uh, capital pi. And lambda pi pi, lambda pi pi, uh, tau pi pi, and here the polarization time, etc. And all these transport coefficient can be uh, written. We know that what they look like. And of course, uh, we can we in, in our solution we will consider to the leading order of this star. So all the contribution here uh, you can ignore all this. Uh, for example, here this this of order this this, this square this, this star square, and, and here you can ignore the other this star to the power four. And you, you see that because this epsilon is non-zero, right? You see there's a non-zero contribution from lambda pi and pi. So here, right? This is just uh, tells you there exists some nonlinear coupling between this uh, coupling uh, between these two terms. What okay. do you do um, with the logarithmic enhancements? What? With the logarithms. You mean the log z? Yes. Uh, yes, uh, this also ignored. So we don't consider this this orders as well. Um, okay. Um, so um, so we can we can solve this uh, in the similar strategy to uh, study the initialization problem for the non-conformal hydro. Uh, especially we can solve that in the uh, in the context of your flow. Um, um, but we. If we want to see uh, how this system evolve and how things initialize, uh, let's go back to check these uh, independent variables, right? So we still have now, in, in addition to the energy density and the shear part, we also have the uh, bulk part, uh, sorry, also have the uh, pressure and the bulk uh, pressure. So that means if we have, if we, if we allow the attractor exist and the attractor allows to us to initialize at some early time tau zero, and you have some universal curve which tells you that at any later time, tau, all these properties, all these variables, energy density, pressure, uh, shear strength tensor, and the bulk pressure are well defined, right? So that means you need some attractor for, for these uh, different variables. And now, you, because we have some non conforming uh, non contributions, these independent functions, which we are going to study, uh, we're going to focus about. We are going to focus on just this, uh, not the energy decay rate of energy density, but decay rate of enthalpy density, so E plus P here. And we also have the ratio between the end, the pi between E plus P. So that uh, is normally known as the uh, Renault, shear Renault number. And also we know there's a correspondingly the bulk Renault number. Here. So these are three quantities we are going to focus to study the attraction in the non conformal case. Um, here's the result, right? There's the G, right? And then remind you what G is. G is, a, um, G is the relative decay rate of enthalpy density. You see it, here's the uh, uh, solution. Uh, first of all, this is the black curve and the black dash, dash curve, just uh, again, the first order and the second order a gradient expansion solution. And except these two curves, all these other curves are exact solutions from the equation of motion uh, numerically resolved. And uh, the different colors corresponding to different initial condition. And we again, we, uh, we just borrow the idea to separate this uh, solution between W smaller than one and W greater than one. So you say W greater than one, if you have some uh, perturbation around the, the attractor, you do see the, uh, the, the perturbation will decay very fast. Actually, you can check that this is the exponential decay, right? So you do have the late time attractor, but that doesn't tell you here you have early time attractor because you see, for example, you have some initial perturbation around some attractor solution, and it will evolve longer enough and long enough to say that all these curves, which start at W smaller than one, will merge to the single curve at some point 
which W greater than one. So this is a demonstration that we don't have early time attraction in the non-conformal case. Of course, this is for the G, that is for the channel of the uh, relative decay rate of the enthalpy density. And this also happens for the other two channels. This is for the shear renal numbers. You do see, again, although you have the late time attractor, but early time attractor doesn't exist. That means you, you, if you consider some time, initial time, initial condition dependent evolution, all this curve will merge to the single curve at W greater than one, but not smaller than one. And this is for the shear and also for the bulk. Okay, so uh, this is what we find numerically, right? Uh, this is already if some, there were some conclusion. Uh, we can say that in the, in the case of non-common fluid, the attractor behavior is, is drastically different compared to the solution we know in the conformal case, right? And this is not, we find only, this is not, uh, this is, okay, we find this solution, uh, this behavior, but we also, uh, there are other people who find it as well. Um, uh, okay, so we don't have early time attractor, but uh, another good news is we have late time attractor because uh, it's, uh, it's kind of expensive because all this evolution will, to, will evolve towards normalization. So that means we have hydro fixed point, uh, but I didn't explain, but that just tell you, if you have hydro fixed point, we always have late time attractor. Okay, um, so then this is a numerical solution tells us that we have, we don't have early time attractor. That means also in some sense that early time perturbation we are instable. But how to understand this? Uh, we can actually uh, carry some analytic analysis with take some uh, formulas. We can show that all these uh, quantities, all these functions, actually they are mixings of some instable and stable modes. Although if you want to write the, uh, uh, this, uh, this factors, uh, this familiar factor here, the power and the exponential factors, but this factor itself uh, have two contribution, two sources. One is we define the psi minus, one is psi plus. And each of these modes, this evolution, a similar structure, right? You can see that it has a exponential factor, exponential minus W, but also the power detract, power part depends on lambda plus minus. This lambda plus minus just some eigenfunc eigenvalues of some matrix, actually the matrix of the early time dynamics. And we can solve that as a function of and the function epsilon and epsilon I remind you again epsilon is uh, how the system is uh, how uh, how the non-conform symmetry is introduced here. So the epsilon is larger if you have, uh, for example, the uh, a cipital sound is much smaller than one third. When epsilon goes to zero, that this means the system go back to conformal case. Again, uh, but anyway, uh, for different epsilon, we see that these two parameters here, this uh, two eigenvalues lambda plus minus, appear in this power structure. One of them is always positive, and the one, the other one is always negative. So the negative one is uh, kind of uh, good for us because it uh, gives some uh, stable mode that you should consider here. You should have some power law which is negative, and of course this uh, structure gives you the idea that all this correlation will decay very fast at early time. But on the other hand, if you have a positive lambda here, the positive eigenvalue, and this is apparently some instable mode at early time. So that, think, that gives you the understanding or interpretation why we don't see the early time attractor, but early time instable mode. And uh, we have checked this for different epsilon. Of course, uh, we can see that for all this epsilon, as long as this epsilon or this non-conformal symmetry exists, you always have this positive eigenvalue. So that means there's no smooth transition. That means you, if, if you transition, if you have some conformal rate, and if you introduce some very small uh, parameter which breaks your non-conformal symmetry, so that introduce non-conformal uh, properties, you always have this non-instable mode, right? And we also check that if we uh, uh, tune this parameter to zero, exactly, exactly zero, then that's a, some special case. In that case, we find that uh, this uh, two eigen modes, they are decoupled. So the only contribution from the evolution is the negative eigen modes. So that's a stable mode. And that in that case, this lambda minus goes back to uh, the non conform uh, the conformal parameter of theta. So as we expect it. Uh, of course, uh, this is kind of bad news for us because we expect the early time attractor to help us to initialize the hydride early, early time. But now in the non-conformal case, we don't see early time attractor. 
so we try to understand and try to find a way to restore the early time and pattern in non-conformal case. Of course, first case is uh, we can see that it's very clearly or straightforwardly because we already see there exists a negative eigenvalue which corresponding to in the early time stable mode. So that applies to sign minus. And the sign minus itself actually, uh, we have proved that it's just a, some mixing between these two uh, channels, the shear renal channels, uh, shear renal numbers and bulk renal numbers. That means if you have the evolution of hydrodynamics, uh, you can just uh, uh, initialize the shear channel and bulk channel in some special way. Again, even the whole full solution itself does not have the early time attractor, but the combined structure gives you the, uh, the sign minor, the, sta the stable mode has early time attractor, right? So this is the result showing here. Okay, another alternative uh, solution to uh, restore the early time attractor is we can actually tune the uh, transport coefficient. Uh, we have actually, uh, for the non conform case, we have many handful of transport coefficients first order, second order, et cetera. And we study that, we find that there's only one that is, uh, that matters that is delta capital pi pi. And um, give some analytical analysis, we know we can give some critical value which of the critical value gives you like this, the delta pi pi divided by the tau pi, the, uh, uh, the relaxation time in the bulk channel as a function of the uh, non-conformal parameter epsilon is in this way. Right, you can, because this epsilon we consider that small number, you can expand that. So the leading other one is for third. Let me remind you the, uh, the introduced one from underlying dynamics, actually that's a result for the delta pi pi from kinetic theory, it's two thirds. So if we extend, we, if, so if we give some extra factor of this delta pi pi by factor two, we'll reach this, non, this uh, critical value for this, uh, uh, for this, uh, uh, for this transport coefficient. And given this critical value, if you set it back to uh, your solution, you will restore the uh, uh, early time attractor. And this is the exact, and exact proof. We can check that numerically. Here, we just use some critical value, uh, some value of the uh, delta pi pi greater than this one. And that's what we find. Okay, indeed, we can restore the early time attractor. So this in some sense means that uh, the trans second transport coefficient, uh, you, you, you don't need, you don't only uh, consider that solution, that's a solution from the kinetic theory. Uh, you can consider also it has the uh, gather constraint uh, because of, uh, because of you want, if you want to, uh, you want to have early time attractor. So this gave you some extra constraint of delta pi pi. Okay, given that, let me uh, summarize my talk today. So I hope I, I convince you that the picture now because of the existence of the tractor uh, of the initialization of hydrodynamics become very different, right? If we have the transfer structure here, all this uh, hydrodynamic variable, it can be summarized, uh, it can be initialized at some time tau much greater than the conventionally taken time tau zero, much, much smaller than one in some in other, other way. And this helps us to uh, apply all these hydrodynamics to small system as well, right? But of course, this is the standard, uh, this very good picture uh, only applies to conformal hydrodynamics. We know that in conformal case, there the early time attractor exists very naturally. But in non-conformal case, uh, because it seems to become more com complicated because we don't have uh, naturally the early time attractor. But anyway, even in that case, we know in some certain circumstances, the early time attractor can be restored. So you still have the chance to initialize the system at, at very early time according to your transfer solution. Okay, that's all for my talk today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lee. Are there any questions? Yeah. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, so, so just just a technical question, like the, this attractor solution. So how, how, how exactly you were referring to it, but I didn't understand actually, how do you get it? What, what, what's the, uh, what's the, how do you get the attractor solution, so to speak? Maybe I just missed a very important point. Uh, can you repeat your question again? I can't hear you actually. Okay, I can get closer. So my um, question is about the attractor solution. How do you actually get that? Well, how do you, um, Derive the attractor solution. Uh, you mean how do I get the attractor solution? Yes. Um, yes. Numerically, uh, 
uh, if we have this equation of motion, let's go back to, for example, this um, conformal case is quite uh, simple. If you have the equation of motion, for example, this uh, star, equation of star, you solve that, you can always have this structure. And the transfer solution is one of these uh, solution given particular initial condition. And this is particular initial condition, uh, we know that uh, actually, as I said, one of these interpretation that uh, the initial condition of the transfer corresponding to the free stream fixed point. So that means if you have this uh, uh, equation of motion here and you take that uh, free streaming fixed point and initial condition and you solve that, you will get your transfer. And this is some uh, numerical uh, structure, a numerical way to sketch the attractor. But the analytical way here, right, from the Borry sum, uh, it's more complicated, uh, but it's uh, in some sense uh, still approachable here, right? If you have this uh, analytic structure, all this uh, in, in this form, in the sum of trans, trans series form. And here, sigma didn't explain. Sigma is it's also parameter dependent on initial condition. So you can explain and understand what's the initial condition in sigma corresponding attractor, corresponding to attractor. And you take that number and sub back to this uh, resumed form and you resum to infinite others to also get back to the attractor. Yeah. I see, so the attractor basically is the solution uh, of free streaming uh, at initial time and it will naturally then interpolate between free streaming at the initial time and uh, hydrodynamics at late times. So that's the attractor. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes, yes. Physically, that's, uh, that's, our, that's our interpretation. Uh, I also have a question like uh, 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 about an anisotropy and, and uh, issues like this. So uh, is there any chance of, uh, of doing this kind of uh, stuff for anisotropic uh, systems? Uh, you mean the anisotropic hydro? Yes. Uh, yes. Um, so, um, so, um, so it's kind of complicated. Anisotropic hydro, it's, um, it introduces this parameter. In some sense, it's just a risk sum of the gradients and as a new hydro variable. Um, all this analysis here also applies to, uh, if you consider anisotropic hydro, we can also find some uh, equation of motion, like the equations down here, mm -hmm. in some similar structure. But, the, but the, of course, it's, uh, it's given by respect with the different uh, hydrodynamic variables. And in, that, in such cases, I think you can solve this uh, in, in that, solve that equation motion as well. And uh, uh, because the mathematical structure are similar, so the, uh, the, the, the analysis should be similar as well. But would you, would you expect like uh, the anisotropic system, it would have some kind of, uh, instabilities, additional instabilities that, uh, or uh, so, so usually, I mean, I, I know that this uh, instability business uh, on stable modes typically were uh, talked about in, in kind of anisotropic uh, uh, cases, right? But uh, so, so what's the relation between your uh, new or this kind of non-conformal instabilities and, and these, uh, uh, out of equilibrium, so to speak, or these um, uh, um, anisotropic uh, instabilities. Is there any connection or? Uh... Uh, yeah, yes, I got your question. Yes, I think that's a good question. Um, in principle, I, I think I don't think our instability is the same as the instability in anisotropy QGP or plasma. Um, but we can check at some point, they might have some similar or connections. Hmm. So, so for instance, here, can, can you just explain to us? So, the blue, the blue points are, uh, the blue lines are basically different initial conditions, right? Uh, right. And and so, what is the green line and the purple line and the red line? Could you? Uh, just, the green, uh, purple, and the red also some initial condition. Uh, they are not random in con initial condition, but you can take also as some initial condition and you choose to do the calculation. Right. Right. But but uh, so you just say that uh, so you say that uh, 
the green line is kind of closest to uh, so that so where you say there is no attractor is that the 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 uh, kind of solution which would start at minus one. Uh, yes, uh, yes. Actually, um, the green line, the blue line, and the red line. Uh, as I said, they are also can be treated as some initial condition dependent uh, evolution, but they, they are not random initial condition. They are taken at the fixed point of the free streaming. So the green line is the free streaming stable fixed point. So if you expect some attractive behavior, that will be uh, given by this green line. But you do see that uh, it's close, but you don't see early time attractor. But indeed, one uh, I think one uh, one do this. Uh, uh, Scheme of the re, we, we call it reevaluation of this uh, uh, transport coefficient. All the system evolution goes back to the conformal case. So you see this green curve corresponding to the stable fit point indeed uh, gives you the uh, expected attractor solution. Mm -hmm. So in the, Anna, Anna, in the uh, non conformal case, uh, the free streaming, streaming point is not just minus one. It's, uh, some dependent number depending on epsilon. Yes, that's true. And also you see, because we have uh, extra uh, uh, contribution from the bulk channel. So the free streaming fixed point has three fixed points. Yeah. Uh, if you remember that in the conformal case, you, have, you only have two free streaming fixed points. Okay. So, so what do you think, like, uh, in terms of uh, phenomenology, does your uh, uh, results imply, right, for the small systems? Is it uh, reasonable to use hydrodynamics, or can, can, can your results tell us something about uh, how, how much you can trust hydrodynamics in small systems, or, or does it suggest some other type of approach in small systems, or uh, how do you... And from a phenomenological point of view, how do you see your results? Uh, um, yes, so my study let, at least uh, allows me to uh, apply hydrodynamics to small system. Let's give you some uh, uh, physical interpretation. Yes, if you have early time attractor, the attractor tells you that hydro can be always uh, initialized very small time. So even for small system, the tau zero can be very small than uh, like 0.1 from your ACL, even smaller, that's allowed. Uh, so this is some theory, I, I, some theory support why hydro can be applied to small system. Mm -hmm. uh, but even you want to say um, how phenomenolo phenomenologically you want to see the effect of a tractor, at, at least at, so far, we don't know uh, exactly how we can see that. So, so what, did it do, what does it mean like physically? Uh... That uh, you you run your code uh, hydrodynamics and it's just some random numbers which doesn't necessarily mean uh, that there is a hydro system or uh, so you're just tuning you're just tuning some numbers to not really the right theory that uh, you risk doing if you don't have an attractor. Um, yes, so let's still look at this attractor, right? That means, for example, if you if you initialize at some point here. Even though the num number you choose for the energy density for the pressure or is all this quantity here, still there's a misprint. Um, you initialize them here. That means you can also initialize here, right? Mm -hmm. Because the solution evolution here and here are related by the attractor, and this attractor is a universal curve. So it doesn't depend on some detailed structure. So you can initialize your system at late time and initial the system at late time. It's equivalent to the initialization of the system at very early time. Yeah, I guess sense that it makes very much sense that that the, in small systems you would have some memory of the so of, of some details of the initial condition, right? Uh, it makes perfect sense in somehow. Yeah, yeah. So again, you should remember that all this curve, although it looks like here, it's, it's beyond the applicability of our conventional hydro, but this curve itself is a solution of hydro equation for motion. So it's hydro curve. Mm -hmm. So 
but maybe one question more that but if in the end you cannot just take a very random initial condition right so basically what you're saying with the attractor is that that when you take an initial condition and that initial condition is not exactly in local equilibrium or whatever the team you need that you insert in your hydro you will still end up in the on the attractor but if you have a very random initial condition like an initial condition with a hole in the middle or something then you will not get the same right um yeah that depends on the fact of the of the uh, attractor will uh, uh, because of the attractor, all these random initial condition will decay very fast towards the erosion of the attractor solution. Uh, the condition is again very crucial that you need the attractor, especially the early time attractor. But for the non-conformal case, I, I think this becomes more subtle. If in some certain cases you don't have early time attractor, then uh, then initialization and every time become very sensitive. So, so just a question. So, so this, uh, this, uh, this uh, place where the, uh, where the attractor kind of uh, solution uh, wins, uh, that's where W is equal to one, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, and W was basically the, the proper time over the relaxation time. Yeah. And the relaxation time is, uh, is um, dynamic here or, or how is it defined? Is it this? Uh, I guess it depends, but it's basically et over s, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. so et over s over temperature, it's, uh, it's, uh, it, this is a conformal expectation of the, of the, uh, of the relaxation time. So, so, can, so you, can, you, can you do this kind of analysis in, uh, in relaxation time? Uh, Approximation and also the non uh, the non uh, conformal stuff in the relaxation time approximation. Uh, you mean the um, kinetic theory kinetic theory with the relaxation time approximation? Yes. Um, in principle, in principle, yes. In principle, yes. Yeah, thank you, Lee. It's very uh, nice to discuss uh, some things with you. So, yeah, you're welcome. It's also my pleasure. Yeah. Any any other questions? Then? Yeah. Uh, I have a question. Maybe you should go. Uh, you classify the early stage uh, tractor and the late uh, late stage uh, tractor. Uh, is what's the uh, criteria to do that? Is due to the value of Omega or and why it's uh, what's the physical reason to do the classification? Can you explain? Uh, uh, can you repeat your question? It's uh, it's about the early and the late of W. Yeah, as the early and the late time uh, attractor. How do you classify that? Or how do you define that? And why we why it's necessary to define the the two type attractor? Um, Maybe I yeah, the early time, late time first depends on this uh, W, right? Uh, because we know that the tractor itself, uh, when you consider the solution, all these perturbations around the tractor will decay towards the tractor. This is a definition of a tractor itself. And we know in our solution, this uh, decay mode depends on this factor. It has a power law and exponential factor. And you, you, can, you can play with this factor, right? So W is small, that's early time. And this factor will be dominated by this one, the power law. So you can see that if you plot as a function of time and give you some perturbation, you can see this decay here. Uh, actually, you can find, you can prove that in some sense, this is power law decay. And uh, when W is very large, this is late time. Now all these factors will dominate by the second one, this exponential factor. So you can also check that this, uh, this, this curve here, it's an exponential decay of course. Uh, the axis here is the log scale. So early time, late time, their decay mode, it's uh, decay behavior is different. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Okay, Lee, thank you very much for your presentation. It was uh, very insightful.
and uh, we are looking forward for your next publications. Uh, so yeah, thank you for being here. Okay, thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, Hope to see you soon around somewhere. <laughs> yeah. See you soon. Okay. See you. Bye. 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 Okay.